So this video is my first commission build and it ends up turning into a double build. So I'm getting two banjos for the price of one basically. And you'll see why in a, in a few minutes here, but for now, here's the gourd I'm using. The client wanted the same style banjo as my banjo number 11, but with a larger gourd. So this was the biggest gourd I had laying around and I sent it to him in a picture and he liked it. So I started cutting it open. I still have a really bad system for cutting these open as you can see and this one was a particular uh, experience. I, the way to do it is to just drill a hole and then take like a, like a flat saw and just stick it in there but I don't really have one of those so. We'll get it eventually. And then the best way I've found to flatten it out, especially when I, you do a real butcher job like I just did there, is just to take it out on the asphalt and grind it down. And that gets you a nice flat surface, but it takes a while. But it flattens it out, it does the job. And here's where I ran into some problems. I wasn't originally filming the build, uh, this particular build. So I built the neck, and here's the neck where I had it. And I, I had found these powder post beetle holes all over the lower part of the neck as I was removing material from it. And this was reclaimed lumber that I had got from a, a store that, that is kind of right down the road from me. And it was way more expensive than it had any right to be. And it was in pretty poor condition. But I bought it anyway because I was looking for beech wood in particular. And it was actually kind of hard to find beach in the dimensions that I needed. Um, but then as I was working on the neck, the client actually asked if I could use maple instead. I went and I found this piece of maple. I got this large piece of maple. It was only $20. So here's me laying it out with the new maple. But yeah, and I, I don't have a table saw so I, or a track saw, so I'm just doing my best to rip through this piece of maple and it worked pretty well. So I'm shaping up the neck now and the way I do that is I cut out the side profile first and then I sort of line it all up, take all my measurements again, make sure I got the fifth string peg in the right place and then I cut out the, the width shape of it. This is a headstock design that I've done a few times now. Um, I can't. I kind of came up with it just by like drawing out stuff on the peg head while I was building. It's sort of inspired by, probably most inspired by like Pete Ross style banjos, but it mostly came out of like uh, me using s too small of a piece of wood, too narrow of a piece of wood, um, and just not having a lot of a lot of width to work with. So I just kind of came up with this design out of necessity that way, but I've really liked it since then, and this is the fourth time I'm doing it now. So, And uh, the client specifically asked for this style, so I'm pretty happy with with that headstock design, and I, I'm sure I'll continue to do it again in the future. Now this is the way I level out the fingerboard. I just put some sandpaper on a big joiner plane and sand it down, and then I check it under a straight edge, under the corner of the straight edge to see if I can see any light coming through anywhere. And once I, once I can't see any light coming through, that means that the fingerboard is perfectly flat and I'm good to go. So then I just cut out my fingerboard and headstock overlay material and uh, doing the glue up. And then I don't want to put that other neck that I built to waste because it's a good neck. So I grabbed this other gourd and start getting that ready and got it fiberglassed up. And then while that fiberglass is drying, I took the bigger gourd and sanded that down and got the first coat of shellac on that. And I ended up putting about four or five coats of shellac on that gourd and that's amber shellac. I like the way the amber shellac looks on the gourds. It gives it kind of a more golden, richer color. And I didn't have enough clamps to do all these glue ups at once, so it took me uh, like pretty much two days to do to get all the glue ups done. And in the meantime, I got the pegs made. So I outlined the peg shape, cut it out.
whittle it down and put it in the peg shaper. And then I uh, kind of get it to its final shape, as close as I can to its final shape on the belt sander. I like to ship the banjos out with an extra tuning peg just in case anything happens to one in the future. So I made 12 of these tuning pegs in one day, which was not fun. My, my fingers were, were really hurting by the end of the day, but I got it done. And I got all the glue ups done. And I went on to shaping the new neck. And that's kind of a long, sort of boring process. But eventually, I got the neck looking how I wanted it, and I got it fitted on the on the gourd. And, and right now I'm just checking the scale length and making sure that the neck is sitting in the right spot. And it is. So then I just take a hole saw and drill the sound hole out quick. So now moving on to the side dots, and the client specifically asked to have dots for the first seven frets and then a dot for the twelfth fret. So I laid it all out like that. And here it is. And I never quite know how I want to make the transition from the headstock to the to the to the neck. I thought I was gonna go for more of like a, a defined edge on this one, and I worked on that for quite a while trying to get it right. And in the end, I I don't think I had it so defined. Now another tool I really wish I had was a drill press, table saw, and a drill press. I would be unstoppable, but. Someday. So yeah, the tuning pegs are in place and the neck is, is coming along really well at this point. I just had to sand it, do all the final sanding, which here's a nice long time lapse of me sanding. So I usually don't even bother filming it because it's so boring and long and my thumb was killing me by the end, but got it done. Now I just kind of watch YouTube videos or something. It's not as bad. Time time flies, but yeah, long, long, long part of the process here. And then one of the best parts is putting on the finish. I'm using a teak oil on this, which I, my finishing process is I use a f two or three coats of teak oil on the neck and the fingerboard. Then after that's all cured, I'll go back and I'll put a few coats of shellac just on the neck. Um, I don't put shellac on the fingerboard because I think it. I think it's nice to just have a, a plain oil finish on the fingerboard. I think it just feels better. But yeah, that's my. That's where my finishing. That's what my finishing process is at this time. I'm sure it'll evolve in, in the future, but I'm really liking the results I'm getting from from this right now. And after a few days, the fiberglass is fully cured on this uh, other gourd for, for uh, gourd number 15. And then here's, what, here's how the gourd for 14 is looking. Really nice with that shellac on there. So now I'm measuring out where all the uh, tacks are going to go. And then I drill in like a millimeter maybe, just a, just a little little tiny hole so that when I'm, when I'm tacking the head on I can find where to hit, where to put each uh, tack. So here's the skin I'm using, nice goat skin, I'm sticking it in coffee, 
some sort of warm water with a bunch of a bunch of ground espresso. I put a bunch of Cafe Bastello in there. Um, the client asked for a coffee stained hide, which I've typically done with this style of gourd before. So I put it in the coffee, and here it is out of the coffee. It took up the color really well. Really happy with how that came out. And yeah, then I just had to tack it on. Um, I use hide glue, and I found the key really to getting it tight along with the hide glue is each with each tack, you've got to really pull at it. That's what really tightens it up. The first few tacks are important to have tight, but what really ratchets it up to, to a real high tension that you want is with each and every tack that you put in, you, you're pulling it. I pull it pretty much as hard as I can, and, and if you've soaked it the right amount of time, about 15, 20, 25 minutes, you'll actually be able to feel the, the head stretching with each tack that you put in, and that's how you, that's how I've been, that's how I get them to the, to the tightness that I, that I want. And another part of the process that I need to get a little better at is trimming. I, I'm, I don't think I use sharp enough knives is my problem. And here's the nut. So I just kind of gradually sand down the nut until I can get a good snug fit. This nut I'm putting a little dot of CA glue in and clamping that down and the nut kind of I'm having it slightly overhang on either side and I only use a really little dot of CA glue and that's because I want this nut to be removable if it's ever necessary. The parts of the banjo that are most commonly replaced are the nut, uh, the head, and the, the tuners. So you kind of want to have some, some leeway with all, the, all three of those things so that if, if they ever do need to be replaced, they can be without too much difficulty. Now I'm getting ready to set the neck onto this gourd for gourd 15 here. But yeah, it just works like a wedge, so I, I slowly widen the holes until I have the neck sitting where I want it. And I, based on the scale length that I'm going for, this one was 26 and a quarter inch. So I mark the position of the bridge on the neck, and then once the bridge is kind of sitting where I where I want it on the on the face of the gourd, I I'm I know I'm done, and I don't have to widen the holes anymore. And it's just being held in there by the string tension and and it's a snug fit though you have to kind of knock it out from the bottom with a hammer to get the neck to dislodge but but yeah there's no adhesive or no pins or anything that hold it in and that's the way I've been doing it for a while and it's definitely the way I prefer to do it then I'm putting the shellac on this one and putting the finish on this neck and you can see a better look at all these powder post beetle holes here. I didn't get it on video but I, I filled all of them in with walnut dust. That's some 600 grit sandpaper that I'm going over it with and then I'll also put a, a really thin coat of oil over it too and that, that helps protect it and the sanding just gives it a really nice texture, but the oil protects it. This is a maple tail piece. I just kind of rough it out on the, on the bandsaw, and then I get my final shape on the, on the belt sander. And then just screw in the holes, and that's that. It's a pretty simple, simple tail piece, but it looks really nice. This string I ended up staining more more brown because I think it the white kind of stands out. I'm carving out the nut slots. And now I'm cutting out a plug of ebony to use for the fifth string nut. So I'm sort of drilling into this nice fingerboard. I always hate doing that because I feel like I'm ruining it, but it's necessary to do. And then I was, there is a common problem, and you notice in a lot of older banjos, when you have 
the fifth string not sticking up like that, the, uh, the fourth string will hit against it and create a buzz. And I've been solving that lately by just sanding the fifth string nut down incredibly low so that it's barely sticking out above the fingerboard. And that's been working really well for me. So I'm probably just going to keep doing that. And yeah, so now all I got to do is string it up and you can hear the, the first sounds coming out of it. Two banjos finished, back to back here. Whew. So here they are, all finished and out here being filmed. Um, so this is the maple, this is the beach, and I, they both came out amazing. They both sound amazing. So yeah, I'm done talking, and uh, let's let's see how they both sound.